friends, Tony from Echo Guru here. Today's a bit of a casual day for me. I've recently inherited a very old Axon Sequoia. It's one of my favorite machines. We're gonna, gonna have a bit of a look at it today and get it all ready for scanning. There's gonna be a few videos about this. Today I really just wanna focus on how we can clean our filters and make sure the filters are okay. And this is really something that should be part of our periodic maintenance that we're doing on our machines. And definitely it's gonna be something that I'm gonna check before I turn the machine on because I don't want it to be full of dust, turn the machine on and suck all that dust through the machine. So we're gonna look at the filters. We're gonna look at my pet hate, which is the gel holders and making sure that they're all cleaned up. And finally, we're gonna work on making sure the trackball works smoothly. Nothing annoys me more than a trackball that gets stuck and you're trying to do nice traces and it ends up looking like a starfish. So, as I said, this is an old machine. It's about a 10 or 15 year old machine. Still takes beautiful pictures and um, hopefully we'll be able to get it to a stage where we can use this for a bit of training. We'll see how we go. Uh, the process we're gonna go through today is exactly the same, doesn't matter which machine you're using. The machines might have slightly different locations for the filters, slightly different filter design. Everything might be slightly different, but at the end of the day, all ultrasound machines are essentially the same kind of, kind of package. Okay, so first of all, I want to have a look at the filters. Now, on, on this machine, they're around the back. And so we've got two filters, one on either side. We can just pull those out and inspect them and then give them a good clean. We have a look at this one. This is actually in really good nick. It's uh, not too bad at all. We can see not a lot of dust in there. And as I run my hand across that, a tiny bit of dust is accumulating up in that top corner where it's closest to the, to the fans. Um, but it's not too bad overall. What I'm going to do is just run a quick vacuum over this to give it a tidy up. Depending on the machine, most filters are able to be washed with water. Um, I like to use a, a damp cloth to give that a bit of a wipe, let that dry and give it a, um, give it a vacuum first, then do the damp cloth and, and get it all cleaned up. So we'll do those. This machine has two filters. Have a read of your instruction manual, see how many filters yours has. Again, a little bit dusty. Um, you can see that uh, in through there. That should be an all black appearance, not, not any of that white or gray that we're able to see. And we'll get that all tidied up. Now it's super important to have clean filters. If the filters are dirty, the machine can't breathe properly and that lets it overheat. The last thing you want is for that dust to get sucked in through into the, the workings of the ultrasound machine. There are a lot of boards in here which are, are very fine delicate componentry that really shouldn't have dust on them. So make sure your filters are clean. It makes the machine run cooler, which makes it run faster. If a hot machine slows right down and takes longer to process things. So, we're going to tidy that up, get that running smoothly. Here I've given this a wash. Um, we've run a vacuum over it, given it a wash under the, under the tap, with some running water, and I'm going to let that dry a little bit. To be honest, not a lot of dust, dust came out of this. This was pretty clean to start with, so um, that's a good sign. That means somebody's been maintaining the machine and that um, and the machine's being looked after. So we'll let this dry and we'll pop that back in once it's, uh, once it's all dry. Absolute pet hate is gel holders. These can become disgusting beds of bacteria very quickly if people aren't maintaining um, their equipment and keeping it nice and nice and clean. Up. Here we can see, this is kind of gross, we can see a build up at the bottom there of some dried gel which hasn't been cleaned properly. This is a warming type one which plugs into a, a, an adapter, warms the gel and keeps it nice and warm. Again, uh, read your instruction manual. I'm going to use some, some antiseptic wipes in there and get that all cleaned up without, um, without damaging any of the electrics by soaking that in water. These older school ones, you can drop straight in water. Uh, this is just a, a silicone container. This one's particularly disgusting and we're going to get that all tidied up and cleaned up and ready to go. Overall, the machine needs a good wipe. She's covered in a lot of dust, a lot of, uh, a lot of dirt. We're going to give it a really good clean with all sorts of cleaners. Um, read your instruction manual about what you're allowed to use. I'm going to focus mostly on the body of it just with some soapy water, maybe some um, cream cleanser or something, something of that sort to really get in and get those stubborn stains off. We'll clean this up. We'll pop that back in in just a tech. The final thing I'm going to focus on is the roller ball or the track ball. Now the track ball, as we know, is a ball which uh, able to spin in any direction and 
and that will move our cursor on the screen. They get a buildup of uh, dust or gel or all sorts of things, just, uh, just oils, which can dirty the ball and make it difficult for it to, to move or it can actually affect it from working at all. So to give this a good clean, I'm going to use, uh, in this case, I'm just going to use electronics and screen, um, and screen spray. It's alcohol free, so it's not going to damage any of the componentry inside. This one has got little bits of foam rollers which, which uh, get activated as the ball rolls around, and that's what keeps track of that. Now I'm just using a cleaning cloth here. It doesn't really matter what you use, uh, as long as it's something that's lint free and isn't going to, to leave a lint. We can see here, don't know how well you can see that, uh, this build up of little fluff that it then gets picked up off the rollers. And I'm just going to work my way around just cleaning that off as I do it. These are lots of little bits of fluff and, and dirt which gets caught in that that mechanism and makes it more difficult to spin. As I said, I really like electronics or screen, screen cleaner. It doesn't do any damage to the components and, uh, and helps out. Really anything that's going to wet the ball um, and not cause damage is, is appropriate. little bits that are caught in there, they're moving up as I roll that ball around. I always keep repeating this process until uh, no more fluff's coming out of there. If you're still getting lint and fluff coming out while you're doing this, then it needs more, more process. got to keep doing it. I clean my trackball once a week, try and make that part of the end of week process. Clean the filters on the same day, so the filters and the trackball and overall clean the machine happens once a week, usually on a Friday for me. The gel holder uh, I do more regularly, same as cleaning overall the, 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 the console, that should happen a lot more regularly. A little bit still coming up, but you can feel um, you can feel a lot of a big improvement already in how well that ball's moving. It's not sticking at all, whereas it was a little bit when we started. As I said, do this once a week on a Friday. We'll go through and give this a good clean up, give it a good dusting. If we look after our machines, they'll look after us, and I think this is a really important part of the quality process. It's just that general maintenance. So just a short casual video from me today, hope you all have a great week and uh, we'll come back once this machine's all clean and we hopefully can turn it on and see what it looks like in the inside.